Guys, we did it. Oh my goodness, God is so good. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the prayers. Thank you for sharing and commenting and getting the word out, raising a prayer for Ukraine in this des desperate hour, but God is good. Wow, wow, wow. So much to celebrate today on this 114th day of Russia's invasion into Ukraine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right off the bat, what did we pray about? What did we pray about for the last three or four days? We've been praying for what? For a breakthrough in with the leaders of Germany, France, and Italy who came to Kyiv yesterday. We talked about this, that they were coming with an agenda. We talked about this and that agenda became very clear, but we also prayed that they would be cut off in that agenda and forced to back Ukraine. And that's exactly what's happened. Wow, wow, wow. Again, the genius uh, plan to bring Romania in to be a voice of reason on behalf of Ukraine for that conversation. The minute, uh, you know, Olaf Scholz, Chancellor of Germany, a President uh, of France, uh, Emmanuel Macron, and Prime Minister uh, Mario Draghi of Italy arrived, uh, uh, Russia immediately turned off the gas to, to Germany. They turned off it down by 25%. They turned uh, down Italy gas by 15% in a clear attempt to intimidate. And the evidence of the fact that this is exactly, remember they were on this, this th three-way call from Macron and Schultz with Putin uh, last week is this is what Russia said. The Kremlin said it hoped, this is in the middle of those talks, it hoped the leaders of France, Germany, and Italy would not only discuss weapons supplies in their visits to Kyiv, but rather push, push P President Zelensky to take a realistic look at the state of affairs. I would hope the leaders will not only focus on supporting Ukraine by further pumping into in weapons. That's absolutely pointless and it will prolong people's suffering and cause new damage to the country. What? So exactly what we were saying, there was obvious pressure from Putin on these leaders to telling him, I will crush you, I will kill you economically, I will take you. And it was obvious that they came with that attempt because Olaf Scholz said he would only come to Ukraine when he had something real to do. Well, listen, the reality is nothing real happened. Yes, they approved Ukraine's candidate status, but with so many caveats that they can still bob and weave on that. Um, and, uh, and in fact, Macron has said that they may uh, make him uh, make Ukraine a candidate, uh, but they'll never do it within decades even of making them a member of the EU. So, so in the middle of this, they're coming with this agenda. We pray that they would be blocked out. Again, uh, the US coming with a billion dollar package, uh, President Biden and Secretary of Defense, uh, De Defense Austin making these massive declarations of support. Boris Johnson saying we're all in, has left it that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, what they had, what they said was that um, what the these leaders had to say was that where am I losing it here? Um, is they declared that they are with. Uh, they it said this, it said the leaders of Germany, France, and Italy, and Romania committed at the end of the day to Ukrainian officials that the West would not demand, not demand any concessions, any concessions. In other words, they're not going to make any declaration that they have to have a ceasefire while Russia still occupies territory they've taken since February 24th. They're saying they won't even necessarily demand a ceasefire if Russia still occupies Donbass or Crimea. This is very important because we've said this throughout, as long as Russia controls any territory whatsoever, they, there is going to be suffering among its people. Praise God, praise God, praise God. This is huge, this is huge. And the evidence of the fact that this was their intent is again, I said, they came with in reality nothing. The only thing they brought was at the end of the day, Macron out of nowhere is like, oh, and we'll give you six more howitzers. Do you guys remember how many howitzers they've asked for? 1,000. 
Guys, this is so important. This is so huge. Uh, guys, I'm going to tell you, three of the, uh, the most powerful leaders in the world came to bully Ukraine yesterday and nothing came of it. This is supernatural. This is the result of prayer. We are praising God together today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to stand on the wall, to continue to pray. Guys, th li lives are being saved because of prayer and because of what you're doing. Oh my goodness, we're, we're just rejoicing rejoicing today. And on top of that, there are tons and tons of good things happening. One of the things that's happening is Russia's making no real progress in Severin and Donetsk. They are throwing everything at it, but they're at a stalemate. And this is the, this was reported is Ukraine military intelligence reports that the Russian forces are no longer operating as concrete battalion tactical groups. What that means is Russian control, Russian direction, Russian strategy is gone. They're just throwing random bodies. They are not, they're, they're, they literally have run out of fully, uh, so what happens is you, you work, you put forward a battalion back to, but a uh, tactical group. And then as, as over time, things happen through casualties, things break apart. And then you roll them back from the front, reestablish them as a group and then send them back. But at this point they've run out, they've run out. They have no ability to continue fighting with real battalion tactical groups. Oh, that's crazy. Um, uh, they shot down a, uh, a Russian uh, Suhoi 25 uh, outside of Kharkov. It, uh, the guy, the pilot ejected and uh, in uh, over Belgrade. Uh, in Bakhmut, the Ukrainians shot down an, uh, a uh, Mi 35M uh, uh, Russian helicopter. In Slavyansk, they, they again, man, they have fought, man, the Russians have attacked so many times at, um, and, uh, towards Slavyansk and they get repelled every single time. Here's a big one, guys. We've been praying for Snake Island. Everything's been pretty silent on Snake Island. We couldn't tell if Russia had anything there or not. It was hard to tell. There were some signs they did, but listen to this. This morning, this morning, just a few hours ago, that we've gotten you, uh, yeah, TB2, uh, um, you know, uh, UAV uh, un, uh, drone footage showing two missile strikes directly on the Russian Vasilia uh, tugboat ship that was carrying a Tor M2KM air defense system headed to Snake Island. This is awesome. Why? Because, as we said, if Russia can establish an anti-aircraft and radar system there on Snake Island, they can once again establish control of the northwest portion of the Black Sea and prepare for amphibious attacks on the region of Odessa. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We've said they needed to have another victory by on sea, by sea, uh, in the Black Sea because uh, Russia has been growing uh, uh, restive and uh, they need to be driven out of that portion of the Black Sea and it's happening. Another great thing we're seeing is in occupied territories, we, it's hard to get good detailed information of what's actually happening in occupied territories, especially as far as partisan activity, right? The local population rising up against the Russians. But let me tell you, we've got a couple. One, uh, there was a fire at the coagulant uh, chemical plant in, uh, in Donetsk area in Balahu. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't know what's produced there. Uh, I would assume actually though, it's, uh, it's medical supplies for the war effort effort. Uh, Lugansk, um, they, there was a blast at an ammunition warehouse there. Again, wow, that's awesome. A blast directly taking out an ammunition. What have we said? These kind of shots at logistics, minimal loss of life and maximum effect to stop additional loss of life. In other words, bloodless resolution. Praise God. In Kherson, uh, there was another missile strike directly on a Russian base there. Um, in Abidjansk, it said Russian authorities are continuing to face difficulties implementing their occupation agendas due to pro-Ukrainian pressure in the occupied areas, describing that teachers are refusing to teach under Russian curriculum. Come on, this is awesome because I mentioned this, rather than give humanitarian aid, rather than give food and water and medicine, and in fact, the water and medicine that they're being denied by Russian occupation, guess what? They're focusing all their efforts on Russian education, trying to brainwash children, and their Ukrainian teachers are refusing. Praise God. May they be more brave ones like this. In Militopol, uh, it said, this is, this is a fascinating, 
Krasny. The latest surprise for Russian troops uh, came there where the mayor um, declared that local farmers had caused mass illness among Russians by poisoning cherries. Our farmers prepared another gift for the Russians. Recently treated sweet cherries. In other words, they used the kind of the anti-bug treatment on the cherries right at the point when they were ready for harvest. Because why? It said this is because it caused mass illness among those who stole them from the farmers. <laughs> Again, bloodless resolution. We've said this before. If they're too sick to fight, nobody gets hurt. Praise God for these kind of genius wisdoms, wisdom things. Uh, and again, they can say, well, we were treating for bugs. <laughs> oh, come on. It said actually, and then also in, in the city of Melitopol, uh, when they were, had the Russian, uh, Russia day on the 12th, um, it said that the, the residents of Melitopol, they tried to throw this big celebration, throw out party, give away food. Nobody showed up. In fact, the whole country saw that last Sunday, only 15 people out of 70,000 residents uh, stay, uh, who stayed in the in the occupied city stood in line for Russian passports. They're pushing for. They're saying the Rush, the Ukraine people want Russian passports. Fifteen people out of seventy thousand, guys. These are the kind of things I can't say it enough. The Ukrainian people are saying no, no. Let us continue to stand with them and continue to pray that they can get the support they need. Praise God for brave ones like our friends Vladimir and Lilia who are going into these areas. They're praying. Pray for them to find a way to get to Militopol and get to Mariupol, uh, both cities which are in desperate need of support and care. Actually, in Mariupol, uh, it said uh, that the aide to the mayor said that two tractors and three large truck trailers parked outside the R Russian emergency ministry's headquarters suddenly went up in flames on July 9th due to arson. And then two days later, on the eve of the Russian attack uh, day celebrations, a staffer for the same ministry was stabbed in the back while uh, standing in the crowd and later died. Guys, you've got to understand, these are people who've suffered so much, the Ukrainian people, and they don't want anymore. Pray for them to be supported, pray for the church, and pray for the government to be able to help them. Mm, um, so, man, um, gosh, there's so much going on. Um, on other on other fronts, uh, bah, 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 bah. where are we here? Um, Wow, there's there's a lot more. I can go on and on. I mean, we even had you know, the same day that Russia uh, turned off the gas. Well, guess what? They had a massive explosion at, at the largest natural gas field in the world, uh, in Russia, and uh, and they say they're still going ahead. But guys, there there are Russians in Russia who don't want it, and they're fighting back. Pray for the Russians there. Pray, pray, pray. Wow. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, um, oh gosh, I totally forgot two other little pieces. Uh, you'll need to read these up more yourself. Again, if you want these in written form, uh, go to arisealife.org slash Ukraine. You can find them at the top and click on there, or you can scroll to the bottom and print them out. One is uh, apparently back in April, the Russians attempted to infiltrate the international criminal court that is in investigating war crimes, but they got found out. Praise God. But another piece, and, and you can look up on this, I've been talking about that the, in with the Kremlin, there is massive division. There is a party of war and there is a party of peace. And the, but the thing is, is both of those are divided among themselves. The great thing about the kingdom of Satan is it's made up of egotists. And, and Putin has created a kleptocracy. He's created a government of thieves and thieves are only in it for one person. So they're incapable of effectively coordinating and working together um, because they're all in it for themselves. And so the, this party of peace, they're, they're whining and wailing and pushing on Putin. This party of war is whining and putting but they're actually attacking each other as well. Guys, continue to pray for this. Why? Because again, I said this before, this is exactly the atmosphere where um, a, a Daniel can slip in to the gap. A Daniel can arise and bring righteousness and bring truth and bring peace to Russia and Ukraine. Guys, pray for that. That's just such a big deal. Pray, pray, pray for a spiritual awakening. It might be somebody, the last person we expect, but God gets a hold of his heart. God comes upon him or her and brings. I mean, I gotta tell you, the head of the central bank, she is amazing. 
Wow, I mean, literally, she's a genius. And she spoke out against the war early. So pray, who knows where this Daniel or Daniela might come from. Let's pray for them to arise because God has incredible plans for Ukraine and for Russia. Guys, I gotta tell you another great news about our friends, uh, Vladimir and Lilia. They, because of your gifts, see, I've said this before, God is multiplying your gifts. When you're giving, it's allowing them to be revealed to the world that they are amazing, they are incredible, they're worthy of trust and integrity. And so what I wanna say for you right there is, is um, what they've received today is 400 tons of supplies that they've been able to, they're able to distribute because of the fact that uh, they've demonstrated their integrity. They've demonstrated their passion. They've demonstrated their willingness to sacrifice. That's that's because of your gifts. Actually, today, I was just able to send another 4,555 $4,555 over because of your gifts. Guys, as soon as you give them, we're trying to get them straight over to them because they need them. They go through it as quickly as we give it because they are going to the front lines. They're going into occupied territories. They're ministering everywhere. They're bringing the kingdom of God in word and in deed, right? Just like James talks about it. Widows and, and orphans, well, this is true religion. They're bringing, they're not saying bless you, be well, be warm, be fed. They're feeding the hungry, but they're also bringing the kingdom of God. They're planting churches everywhere they go. This is the revival. This is the harvest time. And guys, you're a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to give, you want to know more about what's going on, you want to stay up with what's going on because they're posting all their photos and videos there. Go to ariselife.org slash help Ukraine. If you want to give, there's a green button. If you scroll down, you'll see three hot, uh, uh, you know, uh, links below where you can see Vladimir, Lilia, and their church blog ideas or good news where you can click on those and go to their Facebook pages. Um, as many of you know, today is the last day we're going to be doing our posts here. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be over at the Ukraine prayer update page. Many of you guys have been worried about whether or not how you're gonna get that. Here's how you do it. You're gonna do this. You're gonna go over there um, and um, the, there's a hot link in the description here, but you can just type in Ukraine prayer update. Should show you that page. Uh, you'll recognize our, our symbol there. Click on it, follow, like. Then here's the other deal. I'm gonna do a little video a little later uh, just saying welcome to the page when you see that you'll also if you watch it you when you watch it live You can choose a little bell there that you can turn on to receive more notifications When we go live and so you can just ask for that and so those are ways to make sure you go I my plan is to be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. But over on the Ukraine prayer update page So please again if you can like and share and comment and send that out That would be super helpful because you know we have thousands here and and, uh, you know, about 14,000 here, and we've got about, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 700 over there at this point. So guys, we'd love to meet you there tomorrow, but we're grateful to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for getting the word out. But I, I can't tell you guys, you don't understand the missile that we dodged yesterday with uh, with Scholz, Macron, and Draghi. Praise God, praise God. He, they, oh, whew. One of my favorites was a photo of, of Macron trying to give a bro hug to Zelensky. And he's like, <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. Guys, uh, we're just so grateful for all of you all. I just want to pray for you though. Because many of you, man, we've had some amazing testimony. Some of you got uh, ministry last night via Zoom. Uh, I, I know I, we prayed for, for one uh, 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 lady who had a knee problem. She says she's healed, praise God. Um, but you matter. You matter, and you don't have to fight to matter. So God, I ask right now that each person listening would gain faith that if you care enough about Ukraine to move world leaders, how much more do you care about the little things or even the big things of our lives? I ask right now that you would allow each person here to experience your goodness and your love in a whole new way, overwhelmed by the fact that you care for them, you love them, you see them. Thank you, Lord. If you need prayer, please don't hesitate. Say need prayer. And guys, you're welcome to pray for each other. And also we have a team that can jump on and pray for you. But don't be silent. But also, if you wanna be part of one of these men's or women's groups that we have meeting on Zoom, just say men's group or women's group and they'll come and give you the details on how to get involved. Praise God. He is so good, so good, so good. Oh, love you guys so much. Um, wow, so tomorrow, 
Ukraine prayer update. Go to that page right now, follow, like, share it, comment, help us get the word out. But we'll see you tomorrow. Have an amazing day.